Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Gold Lactation Conference Online 2014. I'm Fiona Lang-Sharp, IBCLC and Public Relations Coordinator for Gold Conferences. I'm here today with Allison Hazelbaker, and she will be presenting in our tongue tie add-on, When is Tongue Tie Not a Tongue Tie? So I'm just here, going to be chatting with her for a few minutes, and I have just a few questions for you, Allison. Welcome um, to our online conference once again. It's lovely to have you with us. But I would really love to know, can you tell me, yeah, can you tell me a little bit about your work and how did you first get involved with tongue tie? Well, I found out during my master's program back in the late 80s, early 90s that I was tongue-tied. Uh, I was in my 30s and I had no idea. So it, it was, uh, this is a subject of personal relevance for me. During my program, I gave birth to my fourth child, my first son, who happened to also be tongue-tied. And so I decided that it would be very interesting and relevant and, and really a passion of mine to, um, to write my master's thesis on tongue-tie. And so I designed the first prospective study in the United States. Um, and uh, uh, designed the assessment tool for lingual frenulum function during that program. And that's a screening tool to weed out tongue tie in the general population of babies. That's just wonderful because it's such a, a personal story for you. So, uh, you know, a great investment here. That's just wonderful. Can you tell me how, would, how do you think your talk will help other healthcare professionals? Well, I think that there's a tremendous amount of confusion, especially about um, the uh, difference between function and appearance of a tongue tie. And so I think people get confused that if they see a lingual frenulum, that that automatically means that the baby is tongue tied. And I believe that we have a, a huge overdiagnosis of the submucosal and the posterior tie because there can be a lot of things that will cause the lingual frenulum to appear short and tight. And we're going to be talking about that in my talk on what is tongue tie, not a tongue tie. So uh, th this is designed to help uh, relieve and resolve some of the confusion around these lingual frenula that look like they're tied but really don't represent a tongue tie. Well, that sounds excellent. I'm really looking forward to hear a more in-depth uh, conversation about the overdiagnosis. And finally, Allison, can you tell me um, what are the outcomes that you're seeing now as far as, you know, perhaps you can address, you know, the overdiagnosis of the tongue uh, when it's not a tongue tie? Well, I think that, that we're in the first stages of creating awareness. You know, we went through a time where the posterior tie was something that everybody was talking about. And still, it's, you know, it's a very confusing and controversial issue. We have very little research on it. And that doesn't mean that I'm saying that it doesn't exist. What I'm saying is that we need to be more aware that there are other things that can go on for a baby structurally that are not tongue tie, so that we can begin to expand our dialogue and our dialectic about the subject matter. Um, so so I'm really seeing people stepping up to the plate and asking the right kinds of questions so that we can sort through all of this information and arrive at some really good conclusions and some really good assessment process. Well, that sounds wonderful. I'm looking forward to hearing more of that conversation as we dive deeper into this topic um, and having a better understanding and a better awareness, as you, as you said. Well, thank you so much, Allison, um, for chatting with me today. Thank you, everybody. Um, we have been listening with Allison Hazel Baker here, and she is going to be speaking on the faux tie. When it's a tongue tie, is not a tongue tie. Thank you again, Allison.